there. Welcome to the cozy little cabin again. Burr, was it cold Wednesday? It snowed and it's springtime in Michigan. But that's the thing. We're in Michigan and you never know what kind of weather it's going to be. Well, speaking of springtime, I thought it might be good if we did our poem about our four seasons. So let's get our four fingers up. Here we go. Winter, spring, summer, fall. There's four seasons and God made them all. Let's do it one more time. You try to do it right along with me. Here we go. Winter, spring, summer, fall. There's four seasons and God made them all. And yes, we are in springtime. Springtime is when I like to get out in my yard. And the other day when I was in my yard, when it was warmer last week, I saw something. I saw a mama duck and a daddy duck. And I think they were looking for a place to lay their eggs. Because in springtime, that's when we get lots of new baby animals. But they were in my yard and I was so excited. Speaking of the word yard, that is the sound that our letter today begins with. The letter Y. Y makes the Y sound. When we make the letter Y, we make a smiley face like that. And we come right back down and we go down into the basement. Baby Y looks just like its mama. Make a little smiley face and come down into the basement. Y. Y makes the Y sound like yard. Yard. Well, here's another way to make a Y. They made a Y like this. But in our preschool, we make our Y's like this because we're going to be writing in cursive before too many years. So this is the way we practice our Y. But some days you might see a Y like that, and that's okay. The letter Y makes the Y yeah sound. Well, there is a word that I know you can write that starts with the letter Y. It's the word U. Y O and you. Again, you make that smiley face, except you don't go into the basement. You give it a little curl. Y-O-U. You. Sometimes we say, I love, we make a heart, you. And that's what our book is about today. A little mama bunny and a little baby bunny. And this is one of my favorite books. It's called Guess How Much I Love You. I know you've heard this story before, but because it's one of my favorites and it has the word you in it, why? Oh, you, I thought we should read it today. You makes the yes yeah sound. Let's read the book. Guess how much I love you. Love you. Little Nut Brown Hair, who was going to bed, held on tight to Big Nut Brown Hair's very long ears. He wanted to be sure that Big Nut Brown Hair was listening. Guess how much I love you, he said. Oh, I don't think I could guess that, said Big Nut Brown Hair. This much, said Little Nut Brown Hair, stretching his arms as wide, as wide as they could go. Big Nut Brown Hair had even longer arms. But I love you this much, he said. Mmm, that is a lot, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I love you as high as I can reach, said Little Nut Brown Hair. Well, I love you as high as I can reach, said Big Nut Brown Hair. And that is very high, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish I had arms like that. Then Little Nut Brown Hair had a good idea. He tumbled upside down and reached up the tree trunk with his feet. I love you all the way up to my toes, he said. And I love you all the way up to, to your toes, said Big Nut Brown Hair, swinging him up over his head. I love you as high as I can hop, laughed Little Nut Brown Hair, bouncing up and down and up and down. But I love you as high as I can hop, smiled Big Nut Brown Hair, and he hopped so high that his ears touched the branches above. Oh, that's good hopping, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish I could hop like that. I love you all the way down the lane as far as the river, cried Little Nut Brown Hair. 
Well, I love you across the river and over the hills, said Big Nut Brown Hare. The very thought, Little Nut Brown Hare, he, that was very far, he thought. He was almost too sleepy to think any more. Then he looked beyond the thorn bushes and into the big dark night. Nothing could be farther than the sky. I love you right up to the moon, he said, and he closed his eyes. Oh, that's far, said Big Nut Brown Hare. That is very far. But Big Nut Brown Hare settled Little Nut Brown Hare into his bed of leaves. He leaned over and kissed him good night. Then he lay down close by and he whispered with a smile, I love you right up to the moon and back. Oh, that was such a good story. You guys come back over here. I sure did like that book. Guess how much I love you. And there's the word you, Y-O-U. You could write the word you at home. You begins with the letter Y. Did you get a special surprise for Mrs. Kapinka in the mail that begins with the letter Y? I sent you each a yo-yo. If you haven't gotten yours yet, it will come, I promise. We're going to push pause right now, and I want you to go get your yo-yo because we're going to yo-yo together. All right, push pause. Did you find your yo-yo? I found mine. But before we yo-yo, I want to write the word yo-yo on the board because it's super simple and I know you can write it. Yo-yo, Y, O, Y, O. Sometimes you put a little line in there. Yo, yo. If you haven't gotten your yo-yo yet, don't worry. You will get one because Mrs. Kapinka ordered one for everybody in our whole class. Well, here's my yo-yo. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm not very good at yo-yoing, but I'm going to try my best, and I'm going to practice even after this show is over. Yo-yo, what I want us to do is yo-yo and count how many times we can yo-yo because that way we're having fun with our yo-yo, but we're also counting. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, ah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh oh, there it went. But we made it to twelve. That's pretty good. I'm gonna tell you a secret. The first two times I did it, I didn't even make it to three. So you just have to keep practicing and you'll get there. And you know, you might know somebody or you could ask your mom and daddy if they know somebody who can do tricks with a yo-yo. Mrs. Kapanka can't do tricks, but somebody you know might be able to do some tricks. Well, we're gonna talk about numbers now. Let's erase our yo-yo because we talked about the letter Y and we're gonna erase our U, we'll take these down, and we're gonna review one more time the number eight. I sure hope you're practicing the number eight at home. Remember, we make like the letter S, but you keep right on going. And then the number nine, you start at the top, you make a little head, and you give it a leg, eight and nine. Then last time we were here, we talked about the number 10. Whoops. I'm gonna teach you two more numbers besides the number 10 today. We've already talked about the number 10. One, zero. Now I'm gonna teach you the number 11. One, one. And now the number 12. One, two. Do you see a pattern? One, zero, one, 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 two. Let's try this. One, three. Let's try another one. One, four, one, five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's kind of fun to see patterns in math. I like that. 
but we're going to erase 13, 14, and 15 because today we're just going to talk about these, 10, 11, and 12. Now these are so important for us to know because there's something in your house that has all of the numbers from one to 12, and it's the clock. Here is Mrs. Kapanka's big clock. We're going to be learning about the clock in the next few lessons. But for today, what I want you to do is to try to find a clock in your house and identify the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and hiding right up there is the number twelve. You could even practice writing all of the numbers while you're looking at the clock. But that's all we're going to talk about the clock today. We just want to try very hard to remember our numbers 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to erase them because before we go, I have one more activity for us. All right, we have one more activity. We have to put these pictures in the right order, in the way that they happened. So I'm going to put them up here. It's a little girl. Maybe she's getting ready for a birthday party for a friend or for her brother or sister, and she wanted to blow up a balloon. We have to figure out which is the picture that would happen first. So let's look at each picture. There's a balloon. She's put a little bit of air in it. There's a full balloon ready for the party. Oh, these balloons don't have any air in them. And look at this balloon. It's got quite a bit of air. So which picture should we pick first? I don't think I should pick that picture. But I think if I was blowing up a balloon, I would pick the picture where the balloons don't have any air in them. So let's put this picture right up here. That's the first picture that we would see. Some flat balloons. Now what comes next? Oh, looky here. We have the little girl blowing and this one is smaller than this one. So I bet this one comes second because she doesn't have as much air in it. So let's take this one down and put this one up here. All right, she, got, she picked up a balloon. She started to blow. Uh-oh, that's not right. Let's switch these. I think we did it. She picked up a balloon that didn't have any air. She blew a little bit. She blew a little bit harder. And looky there, she has a full balloon. One, two, three, four. This happened first. This happened second. This happened third. And this happened fourth. You did a very good job at helping me solve this puzzle. I can't believe it, but it is time for us to go. Let's sing our little song. I'll see you on Monday, on Monday, on Monday. I'll see you on Monday, the next day of school, in our cozy little cabin. Bye-bye. Ready? Okay, we're ready. Here we go. Okay. 